pen? Phone. 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 <laughs> okay. It looks more like the heart of the side. I look more like the gear and the slash. Okay. 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 He's down in Texas somewhere right now, I think. Bruce? Yeah. Yeah, I can play this year. Okay. Does the clock start? Huh? Seven. 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 Get to be there before seven. Yeah. 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 All right, we'll get this show on the road. Call to order the February meeting number three, February 3, 2020, here at the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers City Hall. Would you all please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Kathleen, roll call, please. Moppin? Here. Rinker? Here. Phillips? Here. Kreitzer? Here. All right, Linda Murray, sorry. Oh, sorry. Linda Murray. I skipped her. Sorry, Linda. Um, all right, first, we have, uh, so we have some pleasant business to do tonight. I'm looking forward to it, Chief. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Uh, it's a Medal of Merit presentation. Um, as we all know, all officers of the Burlington Police Department have an opportunity uh, to have a positive impact on a person's life on a daily basis. Sometimes they're able to be at the right place, the right time, and make the biggest impact by saving a person's life. The Medal of Merit is the department's second highest award and is given to officers who distinguish, distinguish themselves by bravery, heroism, or by exceptional behavior during an extraordinary hazardous situation and resolve the issue without injury to any person. On January 9, 2020, at approximately 3.56 a.m., Burlington police officers and firefighters were dispatched to a structure fire at 113 Fleming Court. Officer Jake Jenkins, Officer Keegan Jacobson, and Officer Tyler Henning arrived on the scene to find the rear portion of this residence engulfed in flames. A bystander had observed the smoke and flames and called 911 before attempting to enter the front of the residence. Officer Jenkins, Jacobson, and Henning attempted to enter through the open front door of the home, but retreated due to heavy smoke, although they could hear the subject yelling for help from the back bedroom of the split-level home. The officers located the victim's bedroom elevated roughly seven feet off the ground on the side of the house. Officer Jenkins went to the neighbor's home and borrowed a six-foot stepladder so that, he, so that he could use his ass to break out the bedroom window. Officer Jacobson and Jenkins, with flames right above them, had to encourage the subject, who was on oxygen weak and incoherent at times, to reach for the officers. All three officers pulled the man from the window and fell from the ladder to the ground before carrying him to the front of the house as he had gone unconscious and was barely breathing. Several rounds of CPR were administered by responding ambulance personnel, and then the subject was taken to Great River Medical Center and later transported to the University of Iowa Hospital and clinics. Two of the three officers were treated and released for smoke inhalation. Special, Special Agent Mark Weedman from the State Fire Marshal's office spoke with the victim several days later, only to learn that he remembers hearing someone banging on his door. He thought they were breaking into his home. Thank goodness a short time later he realized that his house was on fire and the police officers were trying to help him. This small detail alone makes the rescue event even more notable. Special Agent Weedman concluded that the, that the details listed above only reflect a small portion of the stressful and dangerous actions taken by our police officers. He asked for me to please thank them and pass along his gratitude. It is with a great amount of pride that I present Officer Jenkins, Officer Jacobson, and Officer Henning with the Burlington Police Department Medal of Merit for their life-saving actions on January 9, 2020. Gentlemen, please step up. Officer Jacobson. Well done. That is yours. Uh, 
Officer Jake Jenkins. Well done. Thank you. Jimmy. Again, Mayor and Council, uh, it goes without saying how proud uh, we are of their service and uh, their commitment and their obligation to this community uh, to try to keep it safe uh, the best way they know how. And they did a fantastic job on that night. And uh, I can expect nothing less from them in the future. Uh, it's, uh, they've been, they've been uh, really uh, gracious with this and have done some interviews. And, and uh, they're out doing their job. And, and uh, they leave it at that. And they're very humble about uh, their, their duties on this evening. But uh, it is a, a great honor that I uh, present to them this Medal of Merit. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Chief, you want to hang out real quick? I will. Next, we have a, well, first of all, sorry. I just got to get this in here. Yeah, I know you guys are probably going to do it now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have a, a, a proclamation for the 2019 officer, police officer of the year, police officer Tyler Henning. Bill? Yes, I have a proclamation. Whereas in 2000, the Burlington Police Department instituted an award for Officer of the Year, whereby officers had the opportunity to nominate a fellow officer for his or her contribution to the department and the community as a whole. And whereas the award was renamed the Lieutenant Steve Cassidy Officer of the Year Award in memorial to Lieutenant Cassidy, who exemplified the characteristics of an officer going above and beyond expectations on a daily basis, and whereas in 2019, award recipient has been with the Burlington Police Department since August 4th, 2016. He possesses a body of work which falls under what some may call MTE standard, meaning they do not just meet the expectation, rather they achieve more than expected with relationship to their job performance. The information he has collected on gang activity in the city of Burlington has elevated the department's ability to address violent acts wreaking havoc on our community. This officer has provided valuable intel which has assisted in the apprehension and imprisonment of many career criminals while also working diligently to take guns off our streets. He has shown his willingness to work countless hours gathering information to slow the narcotic and gun violence hindering our city and his work will continue to assist with investigations to come. Now, therefore, we, the City Council of the City of Burlington, Iowa, do hereby announce and proclaim the 20th award recipient of the 2019 Officer Year Award to Officer Tyler Henning. In recognition for his positive attitude and providing service to our community throughout 2019, we therefore call upon all citizens to especially honor and show their sincere appreciation to Officer Henning for his dedication and his sacrificing he makes by deed, remark, and attitude. Signed and sealed this third day of February 2020, John D. Bellops, Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I have also have a certificate here for the Officer of the Year, and I'd like to read that if I could please. Please do, sir. Absolutely. Uh, Officer of the Year 2019 is hereby awarded to T Officer Tyler Henning for his dedication, work ethic, and commitment to the Burlington Police Department and the citizens of Burlington, Iowa, and for his efforts collecting data on gang activity, providing information, a great assistance in apprehending career criminals, and establishing relationships to show the narcotic or to slow the narcotic and gun violence hindering our streets. Presented this third day of February 2020, signed myself. 
I just want to talk a little bit about this award. Uh, this award is, a, is an award in the, within the department where they're nominated by their peers. No matter who it is, can nominate another officer. So uh, an officer gets nominated for this uh, award every year and they're selected by their peers uh, for whatever the reason may be uh, that, is, that is noted on the, uh, on the nomination itself. So it's a great honor. Uh, I personally knew Steve Cassidy and I knew his work ethic and I, I worked with uh, Lieutenant Steve Cassidy for many years and I remember his, his uh, work ethic and, and I just need to say that uh, he would be very proud of Officer Henning and, and the work that he does put in uh, as it relates in this uh, award and certificates. So thank you, Mr. Henning. Outstanding. Yep, that would be worth it. So I want to say thank you to everybody. Thanks for your time coming out here. Um, I am very humbled for this award. Um, it's a great honor. Um, not much for words to say, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody who, who is here. Thank you, everybody. And I just want to say the other three officers that were also nominated are also equal to this as well. They're very hardworking officers as well. So again, thank you, guys. Outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'd assume the most of you came here to witness that. So you're more than welcome to leave if you so choose, or you can stay for the exciting part of the meeting. If you do leave, though, please welcome me, or go with me on a hero send-off. Safe for the meeting. No, I know. It's <laughs> amazing how that works. All right. We're going to move on with the consent agenda. All matters listed under item one consent agenda having been discussed are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. On the consent tonight, we have finances and miscellaneous, which is minutes of pay previous meetings, payrolls and city claims, beer, liquor, wine, and cigarette permits, reports and bonds, resolutions. Resolution number one is a resolution approving final acceptance and release of retention monies for the 2019 Aspen and Dill reconstruction project. Resolution, resolution two is a resolution of approving the nuisance abatements for various properties. Resolution approving number three is a resolution approving for the purchase of a commercial dishwasher for lab glassware from Midland Scientific Inc. of Nebraska. Number four is a resolution approving the lease agreement with Des Moines County Historical Society for the Hawkeye Log, Log Cabin in Cripple Park. We also have set dates for public hearings. Number one is consideration of a sale on lot three of Parkview subdivision, Burlington, Iowa with conditions. That's February 18th. Number two is consideration of fiscal year 2021 maximum property tax dollars for the city of Burlington. That is also February 18th. Number three is consideration for plans and specifications for the 2020 Dankwork Park tennis courts repair project, March 2nd, 2020. Number four is consideration of the 2020 amendment to the urban renewal plan for Burlington consolidated urban renewal area related to the use of incremental property tax revenues. And that will be on March 2nd. <clears throat> Number five is consideration for development for a development agreement with Merge LLC, including annual appropriation tax increment payments in the amount not to exceed $2 million. And that is March 2nd, 2020. And we have three appointments, Tree Advisory Board, Dave Hazel and Robert Walker, Human Rights Commission, Bob Fleming, Renewable en Energy Committee, Kirsten Bob. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to remove any of these items from the consent agenda? Council, not seeing any. Can I have a motion to approve all listed under item one consent agenda? Second. Kathleen. Moppin. Yes. Rinker. 
Yes. Phillips? Yes. Kreitzer? Yes. <clears throat> All right, next ordinances. Mr. Rinker. Your Honor, I have a motion for final adoption of an ordinance amending the mayor and council compensation provisions of the City of Burlington, Iowa Code of Ordinances. I need a second. Second. Moved and second. Discussion. Anyone from the audience have any specific concerns on this ordinance? No, no, please, you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Chris Rupke, 2228 Madison Avenue. I did. You guys all should have received a letter from me, and I'm suggesting a different formula, and then this the CPI, and you know, I know you're adding the CPI, but it's also true. A lot of households don't receive that type of increase each year, whatever it might be, whether 1%, 1.5. I know you max it out at 3. My suggestion was to make it a percentage of the medium household income of Burlington. That way, then, everybody knows there's no question, no fights if the city council's giving itself a raise. Oh, they're doing better than me. I didn't get a 1.5% CPI increase in my pay this year. It was only half a percent. And so if you make it to a percentage of the average household income, whatever percentage, I suggested 15%, it would, I think, be more equitable all for the citizens of Burlington, too. Um, if the city does better, i.e., the citizens pay increases, so does the city council. Yeah, unfortunately, if it goes down, so does the city council. And the average household income, I picked that up off of the U.S. Census Bureau website. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else? Shane McCampbell, 2112 Mason Road. Uh, first off, I'd like to just thank you guys for the hard work that you do. Yeah. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Um, when it comes to this situation, uh, I think there's, uh, there's nothing uh, to do but to, to follow through on this. Uh, there's no precedent that is being set here. Uh, those are raised in 81, and then they turned around and did it again in 1997. So it hasn't been done in two decades. I, I heard that there was some opposition from some previous council members. I would just like to remind you all on the council that they all cashed their checks. In 97, it was a $200 raise. Again, that's over two decades ago. They recognized that they needed to change this in the 80s, and they recognized it again in the 90s. So I think you guys need to make sure that you recognize it now in 2020. For those that are oppos in, uh, in opposition that uh, have not served, I just don't think they know the magnitude and the gravity of serving on council. I don't think they know the demands. And I'm not saying that they're ignorant. They're just ignorant to sitting behind there. Until you're sitting behind that seat, you just can't know. Hold on. I'm not done yet. Um, I'm asking you guys. Somebody said, uh, well, it's selfish for the council to give yourselves a raise. First off, you're not giving yourself a raise. This is set for the future. And secondly, I think it's selfish not to. This is not about you guys. Even with you, Bill, I'm, I'm pleading with you tonight, cowboy. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you to change, not because of the pressure, because of the, you guys have to understand, sitting behind that seat. You can't fold because of pressure. We don't need people that every time somebody comes in and puts the squeeze on them, that they fold under pressure. No, we're counting on you guys to do what is right, even when the pressure is on. You have to have thick skin. And you have to be able to handle the pressure, but this is right. Even the situation, the, 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 what you guys have implemented, oh, it's apt. Make no mistake about it. This needs to be done. And you guys have already opened up this carton. Now's not the time to run. Now's the time to let's just, let's just handle this, and then it's done. I had some other things to say, but I, I think I'm going to close that with that. I'm going to ask you guys to, uh, to do the right thing. Again, this is the right thing. We said a long time ago, let me give you the origin or the genesis of this. We said we wanted to make sure that we changed and gave the city council a facelift. That's what we said. We wanted to make sure that we had full representation because we know how it looked in the past, not trying to beat that up. That's what this is about. Let's not forget the main objective here. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Is there any, anyone else in the audience that would like to make an address no council anyone Kathleen let's vote Moppin no Rinker yes 
Phillips? Yes. Kreitzer? Yes. All right, motion passed. Uh, next up is resolutions. Robert? All right, Your Honor, I have a resolution approving contract for the north end of the depot. I need a second. Second, I'm sorry. Good. Uh, this resolution here would approve a contract uh, with Frank Millard Company for uh, $34,500 to do the work to bring the, the north end of the depot up to standard. Uh, we ha I had approval prior back in December. I know that there has been some things that have changed, uh, so this resolution is brought in front of you to uh, decide where this goes. So I guess I'll leave it at that. Uh, I, yeah, I can address that. I, I said on the uh, senior uh, center advisory board at this point and they uh, looking at all the of the options they had in front of them versus staying where they're at or moving to the depot uh, they have opted to stay where they're at so what I would recommend we do is we vote this down today uh, and wait and see what we can do to develop that area at a later date uh, because they're they're not going there so yeah is there any anybody from the audience that have it has any questions or concerns Council? Let's vote. Maupin? No. Rinker? No. Phillips? No. Kreitzer? No. Number two. All right, Your Honor, I have a resolution approving the 2020 Community Catalyst Building Re Remediation Grant Agreement with the Iowa Economic Development Authority for the project at 300 Washington Street. Second. The city previously applied for a grant uh, through the Iowa Economic Development Authority for $100,000 for a community catalyst and building remediation grant. Uh, the city was awarded those funds uh, as part of the application. Uh, Downtown Partners is the sub-recipient of that grant. Uh, they previously entered into a development agreement with the city for this uh, project. Um, part of that was uh, securing a letter of credit um, to back up this grant if they do not fulfill the requirements. The city has a letter of credit that can, um, they could act upon to uh, pay back those funds if need be, but um, we're hoping that's not the case. But the funds are uh, uh, for uh, stabilization and repair of the Elks building at 300 uh, Washington um, in the amount of uh, 100,000. Project completion date as uh, stated on the grant is January 20th, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Tislin. Is there anyone in the audience has any thoughts or concerns? Mr. Freever? Steve Freever, Executive Director of Downtown Partners. Just want to thank you for your support through this, this very long process. We cannot wait to get this work started. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience? Council, any thoughts, concerns? None. Let's vote, Kathleen, please. Moppin? Yes. Rinker? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Kreitzer? Yes. Uh, number three. I have a resolution approving the agreement to extend planning option for the riverfront property and north of 200 North Front Street, the Burlington Memorial Auditorium. Second. Mr. Jim Looks like or Eric, who wants it? Neither of us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we had a presentation at the last work session for a request from the developers to extend the option agreement, the planning option agreement that we uh, signed back in August. Uh, the, the original option agreement had a year's extension built within it. This would be taken, would be approving the use of that one year extension to the planning option agreement as they look at options for developing the auditorium and potentially a hotel adjacent to it. Okay. Is there any thoughts or concerns from the audience? Council? All right. Well, we're going to let him get, let him take a look at it. I guess vote, please. Moppin? No. Brinker? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Kreitzer? Yes. Okay. Motion passed. Uh, now, next are comments from the audience. We want your thoughts and concerns. However, please realize if you bring something to council. If it's not on the agenda, we may not discuss it tonight. Is there any, any discussion or comments from the audience? I see none. Uh, next comments from, uh, anything from uh, city staff? Don, Rhonda, Chief, Fire Marshal? 
Nick, Stephanie, wow. Eric, we got you on the side. Jim? Uh, John, did I, maybe I didn't understand yeah. the question. May I bring up something concerning the Cascade Bridge? At this, is this the Sure, this would be that? the time, yes. Okay. But we, just so you understand, we, yeah, come on up. We may not be able to answer your questions. That's quite all right. Okay, come on up. Okay. And then we'll get back to you. Uh, Thank Jim. you. Terry Ariano, 2800 South Main Street. I've been in here several times saying that what I want to do is help the council with uh, Cascade Bridge. And so a group of people, including myself, signed a contract with Working Bridges to bring some engineers in and do some research. And they are going to have that information available this Thursday. And so we are publicizing um, the fact that we're going to finally have this this information back. We do have a lot of uh, details that I think are very interesting, such as the contract and the blueprints from when the uh, bridge was repaired in 1953. We also have um, the, the people who bid on doing some of the con contracts for the uh, concrete work in the past. They didn't get it, but since then they d have um, purchased the company that did get that contract back uh, 30 years ago. So they have some history on that. And then we also have direct contact with the people who painted the bridge last time, uh, abated the lead paint and painted it, and then are also giving a current bid on what that would take. If I knew what it, this report said, I would tell you right now, I don't. Mm -hmm. um, Lisa Walsh and I are the two that are co-chairs trying to keep this organized. And um, she's going to bring also some economic numbers to the table that have to do with the um, Iowa Mississippi River Parkway National Mississippi Parkway Organization, how they see that, and also with the um, Great River Road Commission, which she's also one of the, the people that are on that commission. So we're just going to, once we have that, which will ho hopefully be on Thursday via email, besides doing a presentation to the public, we're going to email it to everybody on the council so that you have it too. So um, we're just going to go from there and put it out there, and hopefully that could be a consideration and an option too. So thank okay. you. Thank you. And I did bring a little flyers, and I'll put it over there if I could, if anybody wants to come. It's at the f and Bank on Thursday the 6th, 6 o'clock, on the second floor, and conference room 216, 216. So what time? 6 o'clock. OK. OK, thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right, Jim. Uh, my turn to do radio this week. So um, council would be next week. Uh, next week has a conflict with Southeast Iowa Days for those who are going up on Wednesday, Thursday. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind for, I think we've got potentially two who are yeah, here. Yeah, we had Linda and, and I think work might have tried to schedule me something for that same day, but I'll, I'll go with Linda. If she's by herself, is that okay or do we need two? Yeah, we, need, we need two for council talk. Yeah. Okay, so. But you're going to Southeast Iowa Days? Yeah. I'm going. Billy, are you going to Southeast Iowa Days? No, I he have a prior the, commitment. The, so the, okay. the other part of that, I know that Nick is ready to do standby and be available to do that if if you are okay. not able to do it. So I think that's something rather, to keep in mind as we move forward. I'd rather I'll talk to Nick anyways, I think, right? Maybe. Is radio every second Wednesday? Second, second Wednesday, Wednesday every, every month. month. Mm -hmm. So right as it stands right now, you and Linda? Are, yes. Because I know yes. she committed to it, so. Right, and I okay. did too, and then okay. someone was trying to make plans for me. So. Okay, so if you can't, we'll have Nick stand. All right, is that I right? appreciate it. Cool. All right, keep us posted on that. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's it? Okay. Bill, do you got anything to add tonight? No, I'm good. Matt? Uh, no, I'm looking forward to tomorrow, because I don't have to listen to... Uh, uh, the political ads anymore. So. Well, you'll just have to listen to less <laughs> political ads. Robert? Um, no, just uh, other than uh, I, I st still see people driving unsafely. Um, today I was out by the roundabout mm -hmm. and someone actually stopped in the middle of the roundabout to let me in when I had the, the yield sign. Um, and then the, the speed at which people are traveling is kind of scaring me lately. 
I don't know if it's I'm just getting older or I have kids, but um, please, if you're doing 50 miles an hour down Roosevelt, the speed limit's 40, and then other areas, I mean, just be mindful of the, the weather conditions and the people around you. Okay, is that it? Well, the only thing I would remind everybody, it's caucus night, so uh, please, please, if you're if you're going, remember that it's uh, civil conversations get things done. So if there's nothing else, we stand. Yes, sir. I think Pastor Scott wanted to address you guys about something. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out there talking shit. Did, did you want to speak, Pastor? Thank you. We're, we're willing to wait on you. We like you. Oh, <laughs> praise. I almost say praise the Lord. You all have church here. <laughs> I am. <laughs> praise the Lord. I am Freddie Starling. Uh, 517 South 7th Street in Burlington, Iowa. And I'm, I'm grateful and, and uh, appreciative uh, of your uh, support on the uh, Dr. Martin Luther King celebration. It was our, I think, our 33rd year that... Uh, the Lord has blessed us to be in the city and striving to make a difference and keep the dream alive and to participate and encourage others uh, to come in and celebrate with us as we work uh, together. That's my theme, 484 times you may find that in the, in the scripture. Uh, I believe in and I strive to work together. We can learn a lot from one another and we can share and ideas and, and we can come together and we can sense the feelings of others and uh, I'm not a selfish person and I pray that you're not a selfish person. So I wanna just thank you and appreciate you and I hope that you enjoyed uh, Dr. Uh, Jones uh, who certainly, certainly has been a blessing with us and ministering with him uh, down through the years. Uh, thank you very much for your support and we look forward uh, to the next year, Lord bless us as I uh, do want to say this, uh, by way of announcement, we don't have it all together. Together is my theme. That's been my theme for the last two years, together. Uh, we're better together, we're stronger together. Uh, we unite our forces together, and I believe that's in the, in the upcoming about the president and all of that. Uh, we need one another. Uh, so uh, on the February 15th, as we are celebrating, as is known as uh, Black History Month, uh, we are having a uh, breakfast at Faith Temple starting at 7 o'clock, from 7 to approximately 10 on that Saturday. And it's uh, going to be seeking uh, information uh, from uh, those that are, uh, don't have a job, uh, don't have a trade, uh, what skills do you have? Uh, what's your vision? What would you like to do? Uh, uh, where do we go from here? Uh, it's time for a change and let that change begin in, in us, in individuals. And I don't, I don't think it's just for any one or two groups of people. I think it's for the uh, entire uh, human uh, uh, people to come together and to share and to help and enlighten one another, uh, let them know what uh, they can go and, and, uh, and better their skills uh, and jobs and uh, what is holding you back. Uh, we, we don't need to be pointing a finger at any one individual holding us back. Uh, so many times I just hold myself back uh, by not getting up and, and getting out. And uh, I noticed, I, I preached this and I said that, I said all the snow was out there and I really didn't see not one particular race with a shovel on their back going to shovel snow, shovel driveways. I mean, there are things we can do to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. I say, I was, and uh, Reverend Shane McCallum, no, I, I was just one. I'm try, trying to pat myself on the back, but I picked tomatoes. I worked at Mercy Hospital. I washed windows. I cleaned basements. Uh, uh, I wasn't a lazy person, but uh, this is what we, we want to do. We want to see if we can't motivate young people. And, and uh, my heart is heavy because so many are going to prison off of little penny ante drugs. And uh, what are we doing? What am I doing as a pastor? Well, I'm preaching every Sunday in church. I'm, I'm praying. I'm, I'm doing. Uh, what am I doing out on the street? You know what I mean? So uh, uh, this is where my, my uh, heart is. 
uh, let's, uh, let's unite our forces together and let's see if we can make a change. This is 2020 and I'm seeing and I'm sensing uh, much to happen uh, in the 2020 as we go forward. So I, I thank you for uh, listening uh, to me. I pray that you will come and, and give your input. We're gonna have Dr. Barry McQuarrie uh, from Macomb. We're gonna have uh, uh, Dr. Sadler from Macomb uh, University. Uh, they, are part of our, they are part of our church there in, in, our, in Macomb. Uh, Dr. S.C. Rulledge and uh, Professor Watkins and several others just have a spot to to help us uh, to see some things that uh, they may share with me and I can help uh, pass them on and, and your input, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend. All right, well, I think that's... Is this going to the audience? Yeah, it is. Man, you would think you would know. You know, I just wanted to say, since I'm down here, I would be remiss to say, it's just a, a lovely, State lovely your name council. And, and address, please. Name and address, please. I don't appreciate your attitude. <laughs> Shane McCampbell, 2112 Mason Road. Uh, it's just good to see uh, just a lovely, fantastic looking council, uh, excluding Jim, of course. Um, he kind of brings you guys down in the looks area, but you can't have perfection. I, I just want to thank you guys uh, tonight for, uh, uh, for uh, going and passing that. Um, again, I know that uh, uh, you guys did receive some guff. Uh, I want to personally thank Matt Rinker who I had no doubt would remain strong to his beliefs. Uh, he's just built that way, and I can respect that. I want to thank Rob, uh, because Rob, you've got a heart, and uh, I knew that you would see through all the, all the mess and understand what was most important, that it was down the road for others. Um, John, I'm not going to go into what I've got to say about you. I'll just leave it there, but I appreciate you, Mayor. And Mr. Moppin, you voted no. And you know what? You said no from the very beginning, and I can respect that. So I want to appreciate you. Even though you didn't vote the way I wanted you to, uh, that's how you felt, and I can respect that. And that's the way it is, that some people may not agree with how you vote with some things, but just remain true, and uh, uh, people will respect that. I respect you guys tonight. And Kathleen, it's always a pleasure to see you. E.T. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I believe that is it. So we will... Need a motion to adjourn. I don't have a motion to close. Second. Kathleen, vote, please. Maupin? Yes. Rinker? Yes.